Hello YouTubers, Alaska Prepper here. Well, it's time for us to go over that video I put up that was supposed to be a thought experiment. However, before we get into that, ladies and gentlemen, let's shout out some new subscribers and welcome them to our community. All right, you all know how I feel about this. I think it's very important that we recognize those new subscribers i.e. new community members so that they can feel welcomed in the AP community. I'm sure that you all are uh, doing a great job welcoming our new subscribers. So let's start it off. If for some reason I shouted you out last week, then guess what? You're getting a two for one. You're getting a BOGO. Okay? So first one here is Shrimp58 C. Kennedy. Mini yellow ladybug. I think I did shout out mini uh, yellow ladybug last week. Uh, Bush Miller Sayer. Mill Sayer. Bush Mill Sayer. Okay. Bush Mills Rare. <laughs> Primarize. Barbara Dogherty. Nojo. Todd Burr. Micah. Michael Warnke. Seren. Gardner. Paige King. Hector Franco, Dale Litt, Shirley Sorrell, Wanda Leash, Stormy, Robert Dickel, My Lippy Leg Life, <laughs> Joseph Eberada, Charnois Chep, Dana Hensley, Eileen Soltero, Kenny Tung, PR510, Theresa Sailor, CTT, Deborah Smith, Arnett R, Cindy V, <laughs> The 717 Patriot, Linda Diamond, Sue Birnbaum, Practice 1982, Frank, Missy Eckerman, THS Hoop, Samuel Yarian, Lewis Ward, Swazette Witten, The Mega Man, Michael Hope, Linda Gonzalez, Nell 0669, and last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, Benjamin Ludwig. Now, I know we've had more subscribers this last week than what I just shouted out. So, for you new subscribers, in case you're wondering why I didn't shout you out, is because uh, you must have your settings on private so even though you're subscribed to the channel and you can comment and do all that stuff I won't be able to see your profile name or your thumbnail because you've got your setting on private which is perfectly alright just letting you know that that's why I didn't shout you out if you have subscribed within the last week so ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for subscribing it's a pleasure to have you join our community. I hope that you get as much out of it as I do. I've learned a lot since I started uh, hosting this channel and I hope to continue to learn from the community and I hope that you all are learning from each other and helping each other out. That's what it's really all about, all right? Reach one, teach one, and repeat. All right, so having said that, let's go ahead and get on to the comments on the last video that I put up. Well, not the last one, but the video that I put up uh, which started out with a title of test 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 now let's go and get the white elephant out of the room ladies and gentlemen i had a few uh, viewers all right uh that uh didn't appreciate the video or the title because they thought that for some reason it might have either been fear porn or that i was trying to use it as clickbait I hope you all understand why I did this video. I thought that it would be a very good thought experiment so that we can all as a community share with one another what things we would do in the case that we had advance notice that we were going to be experiencing a full grid out situation. Okay, so I figured that with all of our ideas if we went ahead and collectivized all of our ideas that some of us may hear something or read something 
and the other comments that we ourselves did not think about okay so that's why I did this thought experiment now I was gonna do another one maybe next week saying what would you do on the second day however I got so many comments on this one positive comments okay I got so many positive comments on this one uh, that I think that we can leave it at this because you guys are on top of it uh, there's a few comments where I would recommend that they go and look through all of the comments and and see what other people said because they were uh, not really in line with what you need to be doing uh, for a grid down situation especially if you have advance notice okay so again ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for joining in on this conversation I think this is a great topic for us to cover uh, again uh, so that we can see what different people are thinking and to maybe fill in our own gaps that maybe we were not thinking about okay so I'm gonna go ahead and start it out before I start it uh, for anyone on here I didn't really delete any uh, negative comments or criticisms because none of the uh, negative comments or criticisms that I read uh, none of them used expletives and you know they weren't really disrespectful uh, maybe one of them was a little bit close to it but that's okay uh, it's really still family friendly and anyone can read it and not really be greatly offended by any of the negative comments okay so I want you all out there if you could if you ever see a comment like that that's like I'm borderline of being negative and maybe uh, uh, you know on the other side of being respectful please don't beat up on the people okay please don't beat up on them I try to uh, look through all the comments before I do one of these videos to make sure that if there's anything on here that is not I guess I would say appropriate for you know my daughter to read I will take it off and actually YouTube has a function where you can put in you can put in words that you know like bad words you know uh, in there and if any comments cu come up with those bad words they hold those comments for me to review before I allow it to be posted which is a good thing because that function has actually worked pretty well and I've actually had to you know it's actually worked well enough to where it was able to block some really bad inappropriate comments from being posted to the public right I was able to catch it in between all right so it's a uh, it's an ongoing process I don't mind doing it because I think that in order for this community to be proactive and uh, to be a good community to one another we need to keep those kind of nasty things out of it okay I'm a hundred percent for free speech but uh, this platform uh, that I provide here for you all to you know interact with each other is exactly that it's a platform where we interact with each other and we don't shout each other down because everyone has something useful to say uh, maybe not to you personally but to the next person it could be very useful all right so having said that let's go ahead and start it off I'm gonna try to read every single original comment on here okay and then uh, we'll take it from there okay so the first one is here from Kathleen she asked was this supposed to take place and uh, obviously Hood here said that it's not real that it's just a test to get us to thinking so thank you Hood. okay so let's see what JT has to say here she says in the test the CME hits in 72 hours that means you will really only have about 60 hours because the government spent the first 12 hours in a meeting deciding whether to tell us <laughs> uh, this also gave our leadership time to get their families packed and moved to a safe location before the roads became gridlocked I'll tell you what JT ends it off with saying lol but I think JT is spot on okay so 
I said I was only going to read the original comments, but this one right here, since it was more of a question, I went ahead and read those. So thank you guys for answering that. Let's let's see here. Let's might as well read Marsh, Martian Prepper's comment. Uh, probably never, but better be prepared. Having solar power is a big having solar power, a big tank of propane for heating and cooking, enough food and tequila for a couple of years. Also silver for currency, bullets, and cigarettes to use for trading just in case. Hey, I can't say I disagree with any of that. I do like me a little tequila very, very rarely. And then Natsu here says, is this a test? And then Eddie here says, yes, it is. So I appreciate you guys for uh, jumping on that really quick, okay? Because I, honestly, ladies and gentlemen, I did not intend for one second to try to fool anyone into thinking that that was a real situation, okay? That's why I put the words test, test, test in the beginning of the title. And as you know, I went ahead and changed it. I changed the title and I added, uh, this is not real after test, test, test. Okay, so. Uh, and then here, no one says, I don't see a link to the article. And then Laura T here says, it's just a test to get you thinking about what you would do if it really happened. Another one. So I'm not really sure, ladies and gentlemen, how I could have made it any more clearer. So uh, honestly, I, I really mean this. For those of you that thought that this was something that was for real, I truly did not mean to make it look like that. It's the last thing that I would want to do, okay? Uh, having said that, you know what's kind of interesting? While I was doing this video yesterday, you know, the video that I put up about this, while I was doing that video, I guess there was power outages going on in the East Coast. I still don't know everything about it, but I guess New York got hit with a with a pretty big power outage. Uh, something about some transformers that blew up and caught on fire or something. So, or, or transformers at some electric companies. Uh, I've looked into it a little bit, but I really haven't found too much information on it. Uh, so it's pretty interesting that while I was doing this video, that stuff, some, something similar to that, you know, not worldwide, but in a localized event, something was happening that was similar to that. Okay. So uh, Eddie says, figure out if my fridge or freezer would work as a Faraday cage. Hey, that's uh, a very uh, interesting concept. Uh, to tell you the truth, I think a refrigerator or freezer since they are encased on the outside with metal i think that if you got some some uh, some of that metal tape you know that silver metal tape and you ground down the paint from the seams and put that silver tape around there and then ground it the uh box the freezer or the fridge i think that might pass for a faraday cage so so that's a good point there eddie Okay, and how's it says, okay, I won't pay my bills. All righty then. <laughs> I guess if something like that did happen, I think paying our bills is the last thing we would really think about. Uh, I thought it was going to be a fake alien invasion. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. If you mean that you think that that's what they're planning, I have no idea. Okay. Let's see. Retired 75th says nuke power nuclear power plants cores must be constantly cooled or there could be a meltdown if the power goes out standby generators can keep pumps going for a time however if the electronics are fried as a result of a cme uh, then the cores will overheat in a day or two resulting in a meltdown uh, the plant is still really uh, Nagasaki uh, Fukushima remember I think he meant remember Fukushima the plant is still releasing radioactive material into the ocean and that's true I mean this doesn't really go into what he would do on the first day but what he said about the uh, Fukushima uh, power plants I think it's two or three actually that melted down not just one 
they are still releasing radioactive material into the uh, Pacific Ocean, all right? I was actually, uh, in a way, relieved after my fishing trip got canceled this summer because the boat broke down uh, that we didn't go because I did hear about that and I heard that the radiation levels on the west coast of the United States, including the west coast of Alaska, uh, they're a little bit higher. I'm not sure how high, but they're indeed higher than what they normally are. And Maida here says, what? You scared me. Uh, medication because I am already uh, prepping food and water and definitely call my family to get on the way to us. So Maida says here that her first priority on that first day, Maida, I'm sorry if I scared you. I didn't mean to scare anyone. I truly did not. Okay. Uh, but uh, Maida says that her first priority would be on that first day is to uh, get as much medications as she can get. Uh, that she needs and to get her family together okay so Jean here says I just now read about twin quakes early this a.m. in Anchorage okay they are described as local online as smile look for this oh so I didn't know about that I did read this earlier today and I didn't really look into it because I figured if they if they were bad enough it would be all over the news uh, or all over the uh, YouTube, which is usually my news. So, thank you for letting me know about that, though, Gene. Let's see. Buzz says, Phew, only 72 hours? That will give me time to update my Facebook channel with the appropriate emoji and grumpy cat meme. Grumpy cat meme. <laughs> oh, goodness. I'm hoping that this is going to be a productive video, all right? So far, it's more entertaining, let's say. Okay, so Kevin Shadburn here says, Day number one, I'm buying all the lamp oil and propane I can afford along with extra wick material. Heat and light is my priority. Then I will see if the shelves still have food for upcoming preps I already have. Sorry, for upping preps I already have. Plus, I would fill every possible container in my house, including sinks and tubs, with water. My well won't pump without electricity. So there you go, Kevin. That's probably something that is good for you to know right there. Uh, maybe you can get something that you can attach to your well, should the power go out indefinitely, let's say, that you can maybe put a hand pump on it. Not necessarily something that you will put on now, but if an event like that ever happened that you would have around that you could actually uh, attach, you know, with basic tools and have something that you can pump with it by hand, all right? So, or have some kind of a solar array and a Faraday cage that you can attach to the pump. So I'm not sure exactly how, uh, how that works because I don't have a well, but I'm assuming it's, you know, it's a pump that doesn't draw that much uh, amperage unless it's a really deep well pump that needs a lot of power to operate so so that's uh that's what uh kevin there will do on his uh first day and now ladies and gentlemen i'm not i'm not doing this to critique anyone i'm not i'm not going to say well i think you should do this or i think you should do that or or something like that right i'm reading what the comments are and then I'm letting you all make up your mind on whether that is something that you think you should add to your list of things to do, should something like this ever occur or not, okay? Now, this one here I will critique. Nancy DB says, I'll max out my credit card. <laughs> hey, you know what? If it was really, really happening and they were still accepting credit cards, I would probably use my credit cards as, soon, as long as I could use them. All right, and I'll hold on to my cash. So, so maybe there is some validity to this comment. Let's see, uh, which misspelled? The majority of the population don't pay attention, really won't know. Their experience is glitchy. Oh, their their experience is glitchy TV and drop calls. Keep in mind, most people won't comprehend what has happened for at least six to twelve hours safe enough to get to a few stores 
to get a few last minute preps, it might even be enough to order out of Amazon Prime or Pantry. Uh, the next thing to do is get things into Faraday cages or bags. Uh, the last thing is to cut the power from your house to try to save any large appliances from getting fried in a surge. Plenty of time uh, we might uh, plenty of time we might not have considering CMEs can reach Earth within 24 hours, so a 24-hour time frame might be more useful to discuss. Okay, well, I gave it a 72-hour. A lot of people think that uh, CMEs, and I'm not critiquing this, a lot of people think that CMEs will reach the Earth in 24 hours, uh, and it could, but uh, CMEs don't travel at the speed of light, okay? CMEs travel a lot slower than the speed of light. Uh, they travel extremely fast, but they don't travel at the speed of light, okay? But, uh, okay, thank you for the comment, which... <laughs> which <laughs> all right bar girl barley girl says this freaked me out i don't like this okay okay slightly stacked my first thought was get more wood for heat since i live in a northern state i think i only have two or three weeks supply stacked interesting experiment okay so slightly stack is obviously really concerned with uh making sure that he has enough fuel to heat his home all right so and that is a very good concern this is going to be an exciting subject to talk about can't wait for the live stream <laughs> well thank you laura okay jenny says make sure i have enough propane to make it through the winter for heat and also cook with also grab more dog food and cat food okay and Denise says Dan you're going all war of the worlds on us I not sure I understand exactly what they're saying but thank you for the comment uh, guided one first thing I would do would be grab the foil and start wrapping it around my head. Hey, maybe that would help. Maybe that would help if you did that. Okay, get some extra foil though, guided one. Get extra foil because you could use it for a lot of different things. You can make a solar oven with extra foil. You can make a Faraday cage with some foil. Okay, you can use foil uh, to put food on it and cook it, you know, in a, in a, in a fire. So there's a lot of things you can do with foil. So uh, wrapping it around your head, I mean, that may be able to stop 5G from, you know, going through your, through your skull. I'm not sure if it will or not, but it may be able to. Let's see. Mary Jane says, get as much water as I can stored and prep security such as boards for windows and such. That is a great prep right there. How many people think about prepping plywood or OSB to board up their windows, you know, and to uh, pretty much uh, securitize their homes, you know? So uh, that's, that's a good idea right there. Now, I also heard on a blog post not too long ago, I think this person was from Venezuela and he was being interviewed and he said something about that maybe it was from bosnia i don't remember exactly which but he said that the homes that were most heavily fortified were the homes that were attacked and broken into first because people saw that as an invitation to come and get all the stuff that the people had inside their homes because if the people were concerned enough with boarding up their windows and everything, it means they had something that was worth fighting for. So uh, this person said that the homes that were the most fortified were the ones that got broken into first or attacked first. So I'm not sure. That's kind of a tricky one right there. You know, it really is. That's why I say community is important. You know, if you live in a community where uh, there's a lot of like-minded people, uh, then maybe you can help each other out better that way 
uh, because you'll know that you can somewhat trust the people around you and more than likely if you're like-minded then the people around you and your community may be prepared enough to where they don't have to come and attack you okay so Kevin says uh, water tip for those who pressure can or oh, I really like this comment by the way he says when you use the food don't em don't put the jar back on the shelf empty keep the old lid and fill the jars with water I see a lot of people with cases of empty jars on shelves put them to use saving water pour it out when you're ready to do the next canning that's a great I think that's a great uh, little suggestion there and uh, John Gibson says I'm guessing it's not gonna ruin my fishing one bit guaranteed uh, I guess not I'm not sure what that has to do with the thought exercise but okie dokie let's see Shane Sanders the problem is the government would not warn the people in fear of causing mass chaos uh, that's true this kind of goes in line with what JT was saying but the thing is ladies and gentlemen and this is how I feel and I think there's a little validity to it there are independent scientists out there and astronomers out there that would probably be able to warn the people okay so like for example if you go to the uh, YouTube channel the Grand Solar Minimum uh, I forgot the person's name on there Murray I think I'm not, I'm not sure what his name is but it's a great channel if you haven't gone to it it's called the Grand Solar Minimum all right and they do a really good job there uh, they have a links that you can go on to where there's actually a live picture of the Sun at all times so there's probably someone watching that all the time somewhere in the world okay so does that guarantee that we're gonna get the information on time probably not but even if the government withholds it from us we may still be able to get it from other sources okay now the thought experiment wasn't on whether the information is being kept from us or not but the thought experiment is that we know all right so you know 100 percent that in 72 hours the earth is going to be succumbed by a cme a massive cme that would change life forever destroy the grid okay and then uh, what would you do okay all right so Lori oh Lord it looks like Lori has a good one here let's see okay so Lori says first thing I would do is hit Costco and any bulk food store for any remaining items I would need second fuel and propane next bulk up on animal feed recently I purchased enough seeds for gardening for several years that is something I think people seem to overlook your preps will only last so long, so learning to garden is, is an important skill. No matter how well you think you are prepared, when things go down, there will always be things you have overlooked or wish you have had. So make sure your list, ma so make your list now before things happen and get prepared. Waiting until the last minute usually doesn't go well. Uh, thanks Alaska Prepper for the butter video today oh you're welcome <laughs> uh, great stuff also when the notification popped up for this video it got my heart pumping lol but this is a great idea to get people thinking that would what would we do happy new year thank you Lori. happy new year to you thank you very much all right so paula here says pay my taxes <laughs> Uh, I, I mean, I don't know, you know, that may have some validity to it, that may have, that may make some sense, you know, if for some reason, you know, in a year, everything comes back up for some unforeseen reason, okay, I think that if something like that did happen, it would take several years, but let's say something like that did happen, it's supposed to last, you know, several years, and six months later, everything came back up, and mysteriously or miraculously, the government actually has all the files of who owes what, <laughs> Uh, brain that prepare says that he would drive to Alaska <laughs> oh goodness come on over brain dead okay so retired 75th says DHS put out a grid failure warning last year which was largely ignored 
They also said it could be six months or more before power is restored. If a CME, if it is a CME affecting the country, it could take years and years to replace the grid. People think of transformers or something like a barrel on top of a power pole. True, but some are the size of a small house, and that's true. A major power station, at major power stations, these transformers are lined up one behind the other. These transformers are not shelf items. They are made to order. There must be 50,000 of these around the U.S. Wow, there's that many. How long to manufacture 50,000? We don't make them anymore, and without power, we could not. Uh, not months, but years, maybe decades. Who can do the work when 90% of the population die off the first couple years? Okay, yeah, I mean, that's a good point. Okay, Ram 1BRN. Uh, he says, don't have to wait in the town where we do business. I went today in the pharmacy where I do business. Their computer was down. I drove 80 miles for nothing. I know it's filled. I know it's filled. That's not the problem. They shut the store down. Society needs to quit being so dependent on computers and whatnot. Have they heard of something called paper and pencil? Okay. Uh, Salobrena says, I would make sure I was home and off the roads. I would spend the next 72 hours hoarding water and filling any container available with water. Check cooking gas supplies and put important flash drives and the computer in a Faraday cage. And I would buy up all the meat I could that would be on sale and can it. Stores will be discounting heavily on any meat supplies. Yes, true. Uh, actually, um, that happens on base every once in a while. Whenever, like for example, the last time, uh, not this time around, I don't think the commissary closed this time around. Then again, uh, I haven't been there to check, but the, the previous time that there was a government closure, the commissary, whenever there's a government closure or a government shutdown, the commissary cannot uh, be open because they, their funding is cut off. So they put all of their meats uh, on sale for like 50% off. So it would be something like that, I would think. Let's see. Retire 75th again. A major CME event took place, okay? The Carrington event, no electronics back then. Uh, okay, so retired 75th is just saying about the Carrington event that took place in 1859. Ladies and gentlemen, I really want to read some comments that where people are saying what they are what they are going to do. And Valerie Robles here says that she's worried about the power stations. Yeah, we should be. We should be worried about the nuclear power stations. Okay, retired 75 says, three days to shop at Costco's or Sam's or Walmart. Uh, they will be sold out in 10 hours, probably sooner, before the EMF uh, hits EMF, the CME, uh, or EMP, hits satellites, will go offline. That means cash registers will, uh, and all these stores will not work. That's a good reason to have cash. A good reason to have cash. Let's see. Okay, I want to read some comments on what you would actually do. Like, Namaste here says, I will buy more canned butter. All right, you know, you, you shouldn't be buying more canned butter when you get the warning. You should have that canned butter now, Namaste. You got to get that butter now. Uh, Pamela Martin, prep now so I can stay away from all the crazy people at the stores. There you go. That is a great comment. And look, Jay Tully here says smart. All right. Uh, very, very good comment. Why do you want to wait till the last minute when you have all the time on your side right now? Okay. So that is a great comment. I think that's the best comment I've read so far. All right. 
so far I think that's the best comment prep now all right but there are some things that I'm looking for like uh, I think uh, one of the comments I read before down there uh, you know turn off all your electrical devices unplug them and all the, these kind of things I I'm saving the best comment for last I have a comment that I read that is the best one that I re that I seen in my opinion I'm saving that one for last and I think you guys will see why I'm saving it for last Desi says buy toilet paper and coffee absolutely you know what ladies and gentlemen even if I thought I had everything that I needed I would still try to buy more preps all right even if I thought I had everything that I needed that I won't need anything else for five years I would still try to buy as much stuff as I possibly can all right uh, Larry says thanks AP I have all the parts that is needed to build a Faraday cage uh, you just made me start building it <laughs> there you go and he says good wake-up call that's great that's one of the reasons why I wanted to do this video because I want to get you guys thinking and I want to get you guys to you know be productive not only in your thinking but in your actions which is a great thing okay Laura here has a pretty good one let's see all right let's read through this one my throat is gonna be dry after this ladies and gentlemen just a second let me take a sip all right Laura T says the first thing I would do is call my family to warn them and invite them to come and stay with us okay right after that I will go to the feed store to stock up on chicken and livestock feed uh, then head over to the grocery store and load up on toiletries, canned food, water, meds, and pray they have some veggie seeds so I can have a garden this spring. If there are no seeds, then I will buy the fresh veggies. I, I will buy the fresh veggies I want to grow and harvest the seeds from them. Don't forget the potatoes. Then I need to get wood burn, a wood burning stove hooked up where the pellet stove is located in the house. Hubby will have to break out the chainsaw and get busy chopping wood. I will probably go to the pet store and grab all of the fish antibiotics uh, I could get my hands on. On my way home, I would stop. I didn't think about that, the fish antibiotics. I would probably do the same thing. On my way home, I would shop at the gas station and fill up the vehicle and the gas jugs I brought with me so I have some gas for the generator. On the last day... I would find all the all of, I will fill all of the tubs and sinks in the house with water get uh, get the pea shooters ready and make sure uh, all of the laundry was washed and dried I would do the chores that needed to be done so I wouldn't have a huge load of laundry to scrub by hand etc the last thing I would do is call my job and tell and tell them where they can shove it <laughs> and that I'm going on a permanent vacation you ended at you and you you were doing so well Laura <laughs> you ended it you ended it with a bag <laughs> all right Desi if I had three days well I would be getting my butt to Sam's Club and getting more supplies then go straight to uh, bullseye and get more ammo uh, then come home and install more security devices such as our ancestors and people in the Alaskan bush did and do uh, but most importantly, before all of that, I would call an emergency family meeting. I'm pretty well set, but not prepped to where I would like to be. Okay. Cheryl Cooper here says, I'm screwed. All right. Well, you know what, Cheryl? I'll tell you what. Listen to the comments here that I'm reading off. Uh, read them yourself and get a piece of paper and pencil and take some notes and you can uh, you can at least have something to start with you know take some notes and you can at least make a list of what you would do on on uh, each uh, consecutive day all right let's see uh, John G says DHS.gov already gave a warning of the power grid infrastructure system being at risk didn't say why or how and the phases also in, uh, sorry and the pages also insisted a six month preparation of supplies when running in the gym the other day saw a warning on Main Street news of the power grid being at risk we're being notified he says we're all damned man I hope not but 
You just never know. Kaylin. Kaylin says, I would put certain items in my Faraday cage and tape it closed. Fill every container with a lid I own with water. Then, if time allows, spend the rest of my fiat paper on silver. Picked up some constitutional silver today at the local coin shop. Very nice. Very nice, Kaylin. Very nice. Okay. Sequoia says hopefully once the stop sorry hopefully once the shock wore off survival mode would kick in good video at first i thought this was a real warning man i don't i'm not sure if i'll do something like this again because i don't want to scare people and i don't want uh to be the guy that even though i tried to even though in the title I tried to make it obvious that this is not real, uh, it would be terrible if one day it were a real warning that I was like just trying to put out last minute and no one paid attention to it. So maybe I won't do something like that, like this again. Maybe I'll word it or phrase it in a different way or something. Okay, old man says. Any electronic device that you want to save must be put into a Faraday cage. Yes. For a CME or an EMP. Let's see. Ray says, on day one, I get my preppers grouped together. Yes, definitely you want to get your prepper, group, prepper people together and have them all come in and stay with you if that's your plan. Okay. Let's see. Zachline, Zachline or Zachline. Run to the nearest feed store and buy as many chicks as possible. Buy the largest nets and traps I can find for ocean fishing. I'm not complete in my prepping, but I am considering an alternative lifestyle so as to be self-sufficient with gardening, trees, vines, asparagus, uh, and all plants that produce for up to 50 years. That's, that's actually a good plan, plan to, you know, to uh, plant perennials in your in your garden or in your property so that you can have plants that you don't really have to take care of on an annual basis they'll just pop up on their own let's see uh nomad survival says buy all the food and ammo i could get on day one as far as electronics who cares won't have power to run them anyways better off without them anyways uh, let's see and then he says LOL, the one day I get to sleep in, so how do I get from here to there? Never been in a chat thing. I like scenarios that teach us one opinions, and I like opinions. Uh, okay, good. Let me see. Let, Nomad here says, uh, I get to sleep. L oh, man, that's too bad. Nomad, just listen to the video, okay? Nomad here is asking. I put a comment on here inviting Nomad to come in and... Uh, and join in on the chat and he says that that's the only day of the week that either he or she i'm not sure if it's a he or she i'm gonna say he uh it's the only day of the week that nomad gets to sleep and just listen to the video later on no man okay just listen to it later on all right I, I would love it for you to be on the live chat but you know if you're working hard all week and and you only have one day to sleep in, then by all means, sleep in. Okay, David Blunt. I am going to buy everything in the neighborhood, Dollar General, 20 minutes before the CME hits. Alrighty then. Let's see. This one here looks like it's a long one. And it's from Retep. Uh, I, I hailed, I guess. So let's call it Retep. Okay, so Retep says, good question. As I am a prepper, my first concern should be, should not be supplies. That is a great sentence. As I am a prepper, my first concern should not be supplies. Very good. My first concern would be to prevent my house from burning down. This is one of the things I wanted to find. This is one of the comments I wanted to find because not many people cover this, okay? Since every electronic device in my house that is connected to the grid could burst into flames and set my house on fire, I would start disconnecting as many devices and cables as possible. Long cables running through the house or through the garden 
would uh, I would disconnect let me see I would disconnect two. the shorter the cables the less current that can build up in it uh, next I would load all batteries and thoroughly seal the Faraday, ca Faraday cages I already have with aluminum tape the cage contains emergency devices like solar radio and so and some solar lamps but they are not yet thoroughly closed since I open the box every once in a while uh, to add something to to add something to or change them or charge them next question do we expect a short power down or a global catastrophe if this is a temporary thing I could try to save some electric devices like cell phones laptops and so on by wrapping them in aluminum paper if it is likely to become a global catastrophe I would take as much money from the bank as possible next I would buy as much extra supplies as I could fill up my water supplies and so on great that is a very good comment in my opinion uh, Levi Strauss says first pay all my taxes and bills so they are not late hey there you go I like people that are responsible okay it sounds like you are a very responsible person, Levi, so good for you. Thank you for the comment. Angie, Angie says, I would review my supplies list. If I'm low on anything, I would go purchase it. I would make sure I have propane for cooking and heating. I would fill up my bathtub water storage bag. Okay, a water bat, water bob, all right? And uh, I would call my siblings to see if they wanted to stay with me as I am prepared. All right. Let's see. Eddie says, probably first, thank Yahweh that AP has <laughs> woken so many up. Well, thank you, Eddie. And uh, that I've done what I can. All right. Uh, then get what cash I can from my account and hit local antique shops for off-grid supplies. See, this is thinking outside the box right here. I like this. I like this comment. Hit local antique shops for off-grid supplies I haven't been able to get. Uh, buy a couple chickens from a farmer friend and put under house and crawl space for pest control of bug, of bugs and uh, of bug variety and watering. As even during deepest drought, half-inch water in the crawl space. All right, then then into a broken garbage garage so let's see then into broken garage away from feral cats raccoons i'm lo you're losing me eddie okay all right i'm gonna go to the next sentence here oh this is very long can all meet in the freezer and the fridge take drums take drums out of old washer dryer stack and set up to use for cooking and burning trash one each for sanitary purposes move every piece of that fallen tree that landlord hasn't ask my folks if they're moving with my brother-in-law as he is set up in an old farmhouse with wood stoves and well duct tape stacks of newspaper together to put in between blankets for added warmth as did with no power for a week during 1997 ice storm when I lived in Maine without power for a week. Gather every plastic jug bottle filled with water. Then just before time is up, turn off all water intake valve to house and drain pipes. Uh, move all food items into my room with lock on it. Put an electronics and freezer and fridge. It works as a Faraday cage. Pick up more solar and multi-use wire for after SHTF. Check out all the books on Fox Fire series from local library. Send all my away kids texts telling them I love them and the grandkids. I have a cotton material for making clothes, quilts, hand. If any time is left piecing some quilts together don't have much in way of preps but have know-how and many don't from having lived through things and been through and been taught okay let's see 
Okay, very well. We want to, okay, so that's what you would do. All right. So I, I, I don't want to really concentrate on stuff that's not what you would do because I have so many comments and they're so long. But thank you, Eddie. So look, you guys can pick up, even if you pick up a little bit from every comment, even if a lot of the stuff here is not stuff that you need to do or that you have already done, you can always pick up something here and something there. Okay? Like, for example, the thing that I see in this comment that makes the most sense to me that I never really thought about is hit up local antique shops for off-grid supplies. I think that's a great idea. Okay, old as dirt. AP, this is a very good exercise. I will not post uh, the, the steps I take at this time, but we'll write them down and try to get them to you before the show on Saturday. Oh, I doubt if we'll even get 12 hours notice. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that makes sense, all this dirt. Okay. Martian Prepper, I think this is a great comment. Uh, I would do nothing. I don't rely on the power company for my survival, and a CME EMP is way overrated. Yes, it causes damage in power lines, etc., but if you can survive a lightning hit in your backyard, your car and electronics intact you can also survive a CME EMP that is very much the same thing as it will generate EMP field I had my close encounters with lightning uh, I don't think this is the comment I was thinking about uh, I'm not a professional I'm not a scientist but I don't think that an EMP or CME uh, is the same thing as a lightning I mean maybe a lightning is produces the same results at a very very micro level but I was talking about like if you knew that the grid was going to go down permanently so and it's a good thing though Martian that you don't rely on the power company for what you need that's a good thing and I think that if if you live off grid and you don't rely on the power company and you don't rely on gasoline and having heating oil and all that stuff like a lot of us do then you are really, really ahead of the game, I think. Okay? Chris Gunther says, pray. Well, with all due respect, Chris, I'm not going to say we should all pray, but I pray every day. But praying didn't get me my payday preps that I did today. Actually getting up, right? And I'm not being, I'm not trying to be an ass. All right, excuse my French. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to put someone on the spot or making someone look bad. Okay? Yes, I pray every day. Okay? But when I pray, my preps don't just appear. Okay? All right, I pray to thank God. I pray to ask God for forgiveness. I pray to ask God to keep my family safe, to keep my home safe, to keep our country safe. But that doesn't make my preps appear out of nowhere. I actually have to go and get it. All right. And I've said this before, and I'll just say it again since I'm already on the subject. Okay. I don't think that wh whoever your savior is, all right, because whatever religion you are, as far as whatever religion you are, to me, it doesn't matter. All right. Uh, I, I think I've said this before that to me, religion is just a vehicle. It's a vehicle that we use to get to the same place. Every different religion is a different vehicle. And we decide what vehicle we want to use to get to that same place. All right? But praying is not going to make something appear that you may need to stay alive. And I think that our Savior, whoever you may call your Savior, but our Savior wants us to not suffer. And wants us to live. Because if our Savior did not want us to live, then why did He place us here? So yes, praying is good. But remember that praying is not going to feed you as far as what your body needs to survive. All right, And I do believe that our Savior wants us to survive. I believe that our Savior does not want us to suffer. Okay? So yes, pray, but you should also uh, be prepared to 
you know, to a certain extent, okay? Okay, so C. Rose says, I think this is a great idea. Walking through a possible situation in advance helps us spring to action and cope better during emergencies. It will hopefully also help us take a look at our preps and fill in any holes. Yep, you know, that's, that's good. That's what I intended. Let's see. Pokey Puppy. Go to the farm store or the big box store and get a well point. A pitcher pump, a check valve, and some one and a quarter inch pipe. Then all the canned and dry food I can afford. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Uh, Ju Linda V says, Whom? All I can see is Mega Black Friday plus Major Winter Storm Warning plus, five, plus Cat 5 Hurricane Warning. Multiply the crowd's chaos frenzy by 1,000. We get a forecast of 4 inches of snow and the stores turn into a madhouse in less than 2 hours with a line of cars trying to get in the parking lot. Not to be gloomy Gus, stores will run out pretty quick and people will get angry and desperate. That is a great reason why we should take the time that we have and prepare now. That way, if in a situation where the stores are overwhelmed, you don't have to put yourself or your family members at risk trying to go into a store and get stuff then. All right? The government will not warn the public, okay. Uh, Debbie says, uh, cut some more firewood, okay. Esther Stone, first I would call family, and then I would fill as many gasoline containers as I could get my hands on. This would be for our generator. I would uh, pray that the CME would happen on the other side of the planet or be centered over the Pacific for reduced exposure. Uh, just a quick note on that, Esther, if the CME, if a coronal mass ejection is strong enough, it doesn't matter what side of the planet it hits. It'll engulf the entire planet. It'll go around the entire planet and engulf it. Okay? Uh, let me see. I think there was something else. Uh, also, if you are going to get gasoline for generators, then you may want to think about uh, having a Faraday cage for your generator. Okay? That way... Uh, it will still work after the the CME or after the event alright and also remember that if you're the only house in the block running a noisy generator people are going to notice let's see Susan Hubbard says as I understand it we probably get only six to twelve hours my home is off-grid ready is off-grid ready so I would check my supplies go downstairs and flip the switch to move off power mode uh, make a pot of coffee and then pull up a chair and watch the Aurora Borealis. Okay, it sounds like you've got everything covered, Susan. And, you know, I'm not being sarcastic. If you've got everything covered, then that's awesome. You know, that's good. All right, and uh, she talks about uh, switching her power off. Uh, personally, I think I would take, I would actually go as far as uh, unhooking my power line from my box, from my power box or junction box, whatever it's called. Uh, Crosshair says, good topic. All right, here we go. All right, we have a nice little list here from Eliu. Okay, Eliu says, first I would check so to see what Ben was saying, then if it was so. Okay, number one, call my daughter to gather their bags and start heading here. Gather up all the electronic electric appliances, put them in storage, and set up the kitchen with all the manual appliances. Uh, make sure all the lamp oil and other essentials are where they need to be. Double check all the food storage while I have light. Fill a fill all water storage and clean the Berkey. Double check the Faraday cage to be sure it's ready for the electric gadgets the next day get a big pot of soup cooking because here people tend to converge to talk when odd things happen uh, go to the rec center 
and soak for a long time in the hot tub for the last time. Okay. Where's Wendy? Says, use only cash to buy and top off supplies. The credit and debit cards are monitored to see who is buying what. And it could make you a target. Don't even use the points card. Hey, that's I didn't think about that, tell you the truth. That's a pretty darn good point. Uh, Duchess says, buy more ammo, take a re really hot bath, uh, buy more cat and dog food. Ryan says, I should have already had, had it done, but as of now, I'd be screaming to get my comms and important electronics into a makeshift Faraday cage. Uh, I'd also run as much water into everything as I could and maybe blow some money on more uh, food really quick. Okay. Okay. Uh, Paula says we're going to shore up our house as a defense. That's the first thing. Uh, sp spear hunk. Spear hunked. We would would we actually get a warning? I thought it only took eight or so minutes for sunlight to reach the earth. Yes, spear hunk, but uh, a CME. Uh, doesn't travel as fast as light, all right? So uh, it, it would take a lot longer than eight minutes for it to reach the Earth once it got ejected from the sun. Uh, Layers, Layers says, I almost had a stroke. Stroke. Call my family. <laughs> Sorry about that, Layers. Uh, call my family. Meet them in one place in one hour. Spend all the rest of my uh, spend all the rest of my time filling tub and sinks with water as well as trash barrels because uh, it's winter uh, I don't get that if winter half fill barrel with lid of water outside to freeze and that will be my new freezer okay make sure everything else is cooked or canned or jerked uh, then pray 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 thank you God I am sorry forgive me and I love you there you go he, uh, I think Lairs here did it the right way. He got everything that he needed to get done, and then he prayed. All right? But at least he got everything he needed to get done to give himself and his family the best chance possible. Very good. Uh, Human Tiger says, put solar panel batteries and all electronics in a Faraday cage. Uh, Stephen Craddock says, nice, funny, not... Okay. Leslie Belden, they will warn us about CME, but there won't be time for an EMP, okay? Best thing to prep because, okay, there are various projects for making. Uh, okay. Uh, Any Farmer says, I have most things. I will contact family meeting in minutes and send out each group for more supplies one meeting place and hunker down there you go so so annie's using the uh, power of numbers to get her her things done uh, uh, i.e using family members to gather in one place and everyone does something different okay i need truth before i spend more money before you spend my bill money and it don't happen okay I'm not sure how I'm going to spend your bill money. Let me see. I don't know what he's saying here. Okay. Well, thank you, Laura, for trying to... Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> Some comments get me to wondering. Uh, okay. Okay. Desi says, after you posted this yesterday, I sat down and went through some things. If power went out and it wasn't coming back, I would get out the canning equipment and start canning everything in my freezer, along with dehydrating the frozen vegetables and fruit. Uh, people who do have oil lamps will burn with cooking oil. Okay. Uh, Walmart sells propane burners. You can hook your propane tank from your gas grill to it and continue to cook as usual, and it will hold a canner. Uh, a toilet seat will fit on a five gallon bucket for portable potty. Don't forget to put trash bags 
and at first these are just basic suggestions especially if you just started to prep many blessings to all thank you Desi that was a very good comment or recommendation I already been prepping for 10 years so really besides letting others know not much outstanding comment let's see Clint asked me what's the difference between standard time and Alaska time uh, I'm not sure but I think uh, Clint, McClint, AP is four hours behind me on Eastern when it's a.m. there's 12 noon Eastern uh, so central time would be 11 I'm guessing I I'm not really good at these kind of things ladies and gentlemen okay so here Eddie says uh, Alaska time right now is three hours behind Eastern time okay It's three hours behind Eastern time. Are you sure about that, Eddie? I could have sworn that I'm four hours behind Eastern time. I could be wrong, but I thought that I was four hours behind Eastern time. Okay, Audrey Stewart says, uh, too funny, I would just be in deep trouble. I, would, I wouldn't I would be able to get to stores before they were overrun. That that's, the, that's one of the reasons for this exercise, Audrey. One of the reasons for this exercise is for you to see what gaps there are in your preps. And so that you can fill those gaps now before, it, uh, before it's too late. All right? Okay, Hoots says, I still can't think of anything I'd do other than stay calm, answer the kids' questions by phone, and fill the bathtub with warm water, and take a long soap, because that will be a luxury uh, I'll miss if power goes out. On the third day, I'd fill the tub with water after my last long soak. Okay? That there sounds like someone that's already prepped. All right? Uh, Alaska has his own. Okay, do you have any life savings time change? All right. I'm gonna do. Oh, here we go. Elmer Fox says, "I'm not going to do a thing. If the government announces this, I would watch for another false flag event. Besides, Earth is Earth is not a planet, and the sun is not 93 million miles away." Good luck with your CMEs. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you very much. Jamie T. Jamie T. says, I really thought I was semi-ready for something like this, but after reading some of the comments, I realized I don't have near enough ammo. Yep. There you go. Another reason. I, 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 think, that this, I think that this has been a success so far. Okay, I think it has been a success because I've read a lot of comments where people say that, yeah, I might need this and I might need that because I don't have it. And uh, here's another example with Jamie T saying he may, he may need to get more ammo. Uh, so, yeah. So, you, you guys are listening to these comments and getting ideas on what some things that you may need to do, you know, you know that you can do now or, you know, or have somewhat of an idea of how to do it quickly uh, should you have to and mama Jean, Mima Mima Jean says BS this was never broadcast hoax and I put here you should try reading the title of the video so it's alright no biggie Okay, TGS Source. We do appreciate all, all of those standing for truth. However, we really don't believe they are going to warn anyone. It's all up to us. All glory to the Most High. And uh, yes, and that's another great reason. Ladies and gentlemen, if you really believe that the, that the GOV is not going to warn you of anything, if something were coming our way, that's an even better reason for you to get prepared now. For you to have six months to a year's worth of food, water, medicine, all right, self-defense, all of these things. 
And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, if you guys want to go to this YouTube uh, channel, TGS Source, they have this little video here. I'm not going to talk about what it's about. But if you all want to go check it out, go check it out because uh, just go check it out. It's not the kind of stuff that I cover on this channel, all right, because I want to get people prepared, all right. But go check this video out. It's very inter interesting and thought-provoking. And the name of the channel is TGS Source. So Tango Golf Sierra Source. All right, you can go check out this link right here. Ladies and gentlemen, last but not least, all right, we made it. We made it. Uh, Big Sky Prepping uh, thought that I was using Fear Porn, which is no big deal. Like I said, it's no big deal. But uh, I know that Big Sky Prepping is a, is a, is a good community member, all right? And then I put on here that uh, the title says test, test, test. Uh, how is this hysteria porn? I also remember in the very beginning of the video that this is just a thought experiment. And it was like a, a, about a minute into the video. But uh, Big Sky Prepping is, is a good person. And I appreciate um, them coming back and saying, uh, you seem a decent, thoughtful fellow who genuinely wants to help people. But I'm not the only one who was originally taken aback by this post. I'm sure it wasn't intentional. So I'm sorry for the harsh accusation. However, we've got to be careful with these kinds of things. We don't need a War of the Worlds event. And you know, that's fine, ladies and gentlemen. And Big Sky Prepping, it's all good. Okay, it's all good. Uh, maybe I did make a mistake in the way that I worded the video. Uh, I thought that, you know, I made it clear that it was just a test. But um, uh, I definitely don't want to... Uh, make anyone panic that's definitely not what I want to do but having said that ladies and gentlemen I think that this thought experiment was a very big success I really do I think I've learned a lot from it and I hope that some of you have as well okay so uh, I'm gonna go to the best comment and where is it I think it's here yes this person I'm not gonna go ahead and mention who it was that left this comment because I'm not sure if they wanted me to disclose who they were uh, because they emailed it to me. But this is a very well thought out uh, answer to what they would do. Okay. I think it's very well thought out. I think you guys will as well. Okay. Okay. So first it goes without saying I will call children, grandchildren and families to see what they are prepared and offer to share our home with them. Okay, then, number one, shut off the electricity at the pole and at the electric box in the house, okay? I will unhook the lines at the house if I am able to. Unplug all electric in-house and remove all light bulbs. As I have read that in the 1800s, all metal lines were electrified for hours and had surges for days. After that caused buildings to burn and even electrify it and kill some telegraph operators. Okay. Number two. Gas lines will be shut off at the end of the property, at the regulator near the house, and at each stove. Then the stove gas line will be uncoupled from those lines. So he's disconnecting the gas lines from anything that's connected to his house. Number three. Have food and water in three different locations on the property. That is a great idea. That is a great, great idea. I think, you know, how many of us have thought about that right there? I think that is a great idea. All right. Make sure buckets, hand pumps, extra fire extinguishers, cooking utensils, candles are on the table easy to get to. Make sure all electronics are in the CME proof container and that it is sealed. This includes batteries, wind-up lanterns, radios, clocks, watches, phones, computers, extra flashlights, CD, SD cards, and all wires that go with them. Make sure the number six, make sure that the backup wood stoves and cook stoves are off the shelves and on the floor easy to get to. Unhook the propane from the barbecue grill. Uh, per weather, I will be stuffing extra clothes and shoes into the bug out bag. Unhook the batteries from vehicles and tractor. 
uh, lawnmower and make sure that the portable toolbox is within sight. Uh, number 10, as I have outside animals, livestock will be put, I will put extra food and water out for them as I may be too busy for at least 24 to 72 hours and I do not want uh, my animals to suffer. Now for things that I had not thought of. Number one, I have trees that the electric lines run through and those trees are 25 feet from the house. All the branches will be cut back at least 10 feet uh, this next spring, not the 5 feet they are at now. Extra high voltage through those wires can and will burn, uh, thus so will the trees. Most people do not realize that electricity sparks up to 10 feet from electric lines. Most fire safety guidelines say that trees should be 50 feet from a house. Number two, I will have to look. Oh, well, there you go. I just gave away who it was. This was from All This Dirt. All This Dirt, I'm sorry if I gave this away. Uh, this is your, your answer. Okay, so this is All This Dirt. Okay, so here. I will have to look into more long-term water supply. Although I have three supply areas, they are not easy to get to. Uh, walking and carrying water in the winter with snow and ice is not what I want to rely on. Uh, number three, should the house burn or be damaged? I do have small outbuildings that I can survive in, but a portable potty and tub to wash in. Uh, I do not have extra clothes material. Towels and such will have to be added to my list and a way to keep them away from the house where critters can't damage them. Four, extra tools away from the house and garage such as axe, saws, hammers, pots, and pans for cooking and such are needed in different areas. Uh, it says, he, uh, Oldest Dirt says, Thank you for making me think what may be needed for different disasters. Revising some of my plans now. Have a great day. That was a great, great reply or comment. Okay? So thank you very much for that. That was great. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is the end of this video covering the thought experiment that we had. Thank you everyone for joining in. I really hope that we have a good uh, amount of people here today chatting away. Okay. So thanks to everyone that participated in this. I truly appreciate everyone's comments. Okay. I really do. Even the ones that weren't 100% positive. Uh, that's okay. All right. I always said I don't mind criticism as long as you do it in a classy manner. And that's fine. Okay, so, but I do hope that some of you, if not all of you, got something out of this. Because I think this is a pretty important topic. And more important than the topic is the, uh, is the ideas that we heard today that maybe we did not uh, think about ourselves. Alright, so what we're doing now, what we just did during this exercise is we picked up a few more tools to put in our tool bag. And they may not be physical tools, but they are ideas. And ideas are tools that you just have not made into the physical form yet. Okay? So like for example, an idea of having a Faraday cage. Isn't that a great idea? All right? Now that you have that knowledge, you can look into making a Faraday cage. You can look into why it is that a Faraday cage works. And then you can look into what supplies you may need to make one. And you may discover that it's a lot easier than what you think. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go ahead and close it off. I still need to upload this video. So hopefully I will be seeing you all uh, in the chat. Okay. Uh, tomorrow morning, which is going to be my Saturday morning, of course. Well, all of our Saturday mornings. All right, so hopefully we're all in here chatting away. Uh, thank you very much for participating in this. I truly do appreciate everyone who participated in it, and I truly hope that you all get something out of it, okay? So having said that, ladies and gentlemen, remember to be good to each other. When good people do good things, good things happen. Remember to reach one, teach one, and repeat. If we all did this, the world would be a better place, and you know that it will be a better place. Many blessings to every one of you and your families. This is Alaska Prepper and I'm out.